As the year passes and winter comes, the land around the Border Collie Rescue Centre takes on an ethereal beauty. The sheep's diet of grass is supplemented by haylage, sheep nuts and hay, and life goes on. Shep came in for biting people. He was aggressive and untouchable. The peaceful environment helped him relax and he showed an affectionate side to his nature. His wild, disobedient behaviour also changed. Inside was a biddable dog wanting to please. There's hope for him yet. Natalia came from the RSPCA. She was seized as part of a cruelty investigation. She had been shut up in a kitchen for two years and had developed compulsive spinning behaviour. When she arrived at the centre, she was agoraphobic and nervous. The handover was carefully managed at dusk to soften the shock. She was covered with urine burns and sores from sleeping in her own waist. She was also very underweight. Seeing sheep brought her out of her shell and the rural environment helped her by allowing her to unwind. Natalia's recovery was also helped by the fact that she has the natural strength and resilience of her kind. The Border Collie is thought to be the most intelligent and versatile breed of dog. They can turn their talents to many forms of work and they excel at agility and similar kinds of exercises. Present a Collie with a challenge and it will rise to it. Put an obstacle in its way and it will cope with it. They really are a most extraordinary breed of dog. Sue and David weren't looking for dogs for work, just as companions. They had two collies which died aged 12 and 13, and they were looking for another pair. Yes. Yeah, when we lost the second one, um, we decided that we wanted collies again, we wanted two dogs again, um, but we started to, to think, well, there are so many dogs needing homes um, in various centres around the country and being rescued all the time, then, you know, it would have been lovely to have puppies, but maybe we were just well enough set up to, to give dogs a home that needed a home. Sue and David approached Border Collie Rescue and Nikki just happened to have a pair to suit them, Rab and Fly. Actually, um, I think the combination of those two dogs was very interesting because we had um, a young pup that was... Um, totally over the top and almost bordering on being a little bit too cocky for his own good and the other dog actually rather withdrawn not well socialized um, being kept on a farm but actually turned out to be a bit of a failure and that dog came in with a big bubble over her head saying I am a failed sheep dog I have no future so when she came in and we put her through these these um, different assessments um, it was rather nice that I thought by being with the other dogs they can help each other a lot and they did each other a lot of good. I picked them out and put them together um, and I found that um, the young pup, all his confidence um, seemed to just rub off on her and his um, ability just to play and pick things up and be so relaxed he enjoyed different kind of situations. He was actually showing the older dog that she could enjoy herself and enjoy life and it was a really good combination. Fly did need a lot of time to settle. You, you couldn't look at her if, if she thought if she caught you looking at her she would run literally a mile. Mm -hmm. uh, you had to, the only way you could approach her was with, you to, with your back to her um, and it really wasn't possible mm. to do anything with her at all, was no. it? No, any direct eye contact put her under so much pressure that she just couldn't cope with it at mm. the time. She just completely went to pieces. I think there were a few times when we, we wondered, you know, what have mm. we done? Are we up to this job? Yeah. But um, thankfully we stuck with yeah, it and right. she's, she's just yeah. blossoming. And Rab has helped her to build up confidence. That's it. Rab just lo loves everyone and, you know, Thankfully, most people love him. You know, he's, um, because of his, his unusual colouring, you know, he's, he sort of attracts attention. Uh, but he copes with that, and he, in fact, he loves it. So, uh, uh, yes, I he's think... very outgoing. Yes, and, yes. Yeah. 
but he, ha- he, he has shown her that people are okay, and I think she has learnt a lot because of him. Sue and David live next door to a farm, so how do the dogs react to sheep? They know that sheep are significant, but they don't. It's as if they don't know that yeah. know what it's all about, um, and we've had absolutely no trouble with them at all. Mm. But Sue keeps horses, so how do the dogs react to them? <laughs> um, that's an interesting one. Um, they are used to them, but Fly, one of her favourite games is running after the horses and swinging on horses' tails, which is not a good game to play, and we just can't seem to get her out no. of it. Mm-hmm. even had the farrier here doing shoes on the horses, and she has crept into the barn and then run past and swung on the horse's tail while the, the farrier is working. So we're not quite sure what's, no. what the game is there. but um, I, I mean, we... We, we, we often feel that animals are very sensitive to, to each other and to the needs of each other. Mm. And I think there is almost an element with the horses that they know that, that there's something in Fly's background that is, is making her do that. And they are very tolerant. They are and very I think, tolerant. I think probably if Rab did that to the horses or if another dog did it to the horses, I, they wouldn't tolerate it. Yeah. But it's as if they know that, that Fly has been through something and mm. you know yes, particularly two of the, the yes, three horses yes uh, they, yeah, uh, they're very yeah. so yeah. we still would rather discourage the mm. game but mm. uh, <laughs> so Sue and David are happy with their two companion dogs oh we could oh, yes yeah yes. couldn't imagine being without them yeah <laughs> Gail is now in charge of the sheep during assessments and is helping Nicky with the last of Sally's pups. This is Sweep. His new home has been passed and he's ready to go. He is a keen dog with plenty of eye. Naturally steady and well balanced around the sheep. A dog with potential for trialling. Gail keeps the sheep in one place to allow him to go around them. He's a bold young pup, not at all intimidated by the flock of much larger animals. Like all his siblings, Sweet is a friendly soul and will make someone an excellent sheepdog. Gail is left to hold the sheep in the centre of the six acre field. The next pup is Trim, who also has her new home checked and cleared. Trim is a female version of Sweep. Almost hidden in the middle of the litter, like a gifted child in a class, she has the ability to rapidly shape up by learning from her own mistakes. She's a little star in the making. Nikki thinks Trim has the best potential of the litter and secretly would like to have trained her up for herself. But it's just as rewarding to see a dog blossom in its new home and there are always more coming through that need a helping hand. Both pups have gone on to their new homes and are coming on well. In episode 6, we will be hearing from some of the volunteers who help care for the dogs and run the rescue centre. We take a look at Nell in her new home. Gail helps Nikki to assess more dogs and we see how the charity raises some of the funds needed to keep it all going. Join us then.